Welcome to Mastering and Guideline in Ultrasound and Echo. Hi everyone. In this uh, hands-on experience, I am going to focus on the, some practical aspect of the hypertrophic uh, cardiomyopathy type uh, obstructive. Because as you know, over almost over 70, 750,000 patient in USA and almost 15 to 20 million uh, people around the world has uh, some type of the cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. As you know, the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is the most common uh, genetic cardiac disease. And it can have a different variant at different age and with a wide spectral presentation, even though half of them are half, half of the patient are asymptomatic. And it can uh, start and present from childhood to the old age, even 90 years old. It can be concentric, uh, segmental, but generally it divided to the two group. One of them is obstructive and non-obstructive. Obstructive means most of the time is LVOT obstruction. I am assuming that you know, uh, you have checked the, uh, you have the baseline knowledge about hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. If you haven't checked yet, go to this adult playlist in the cardiomyopathy and uh, check it, uh, this uh, clip and the other related clip, apical hypertrophy and all, SAM and all other clips, then come and check this uh, one. Now let's go see in this case how we approach it and how we do Varsalva. Here we have a, a female 58 years old represent uh, with the lightheadedness and pressing cup uh, during forceful defecation and those other strain that push and increase the uh, intra-abdominal and thoracic pressure. The, uh, on the echo, as you can see, we have hypertrophy on the septum and posterior wall and generally there is a almost a concentric, even a little asymmetric between the thickness of septum was 1.4 and uh, posterior wall 1.2. But generally we have hypertrophy, mild to moderate uh, uh, hypertrophy. As you can see on the LVOT, we don't have any narrowing, almost uh, normal for body size compared to the, even without measurement, you can see aortic root and LVOT. The proportion is okay during contraction. We don't see any narrowing. A little turbulence normal at the level of this sigmoid is almost normal. It doesn't, exp we don't expect increased velocity at this level. Shortly, I am going to show you the Doppler at this level. So does we have to do anything on this case and with this uh, measurement, does the patient has any uh, finding related to the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or not? And what we have to do on this patient? Let's go to the Doppler. Here we have, uh, you can see Doppler on the apical tree at this level, exactly this turbulence, we have it here. It's almost a two meter per second. At the apical five, you can see it's almost the same, uh, even a little uh, hard in this view. You can uh, differentiate it, which one belong to the aorta, which one belong to the LVOT. But I explain in another uh, lecture exactly how you can approach and differentiate those Doppler from each other, but what maneuver you should do is better you check them out there. And if we, when we ha here, we put sample at the LVOT at this exactly here that it looks like turbulence or aliasing, we get it almost close to the two, uh, 1.8. And here maximum, as you can see, 1.8 uh, and VTI. So 
that is not too much high a little increased uh, first of all uh, in this case what uh, do we do do we have any finding that we make suspicious uh, patient maybe have LVO2 obstruction or not uh, second what maneuver we have to do so uh, let's go first for the hypertrophy first of all we have to remember that even without the diagnostic criteria for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is over uh, 1.5 millimeter thickness but you have to remember that the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy has many different variant and presentation it can start from the beginning with the just mild hypertrophy and uh, interesting that we have the, the uh, different type of the or variant of the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy that they don't have significant hypertrophy on this case for example septum was 1.4 but in those cases just they have septum or not significant hypertrophy those group of the patient can have LVO2 obstruction my point is that here whenever you have hypertrophy doesn't matter is the sigmoid or no uh, all septum is hypertrophy with any size around about 1.3 always we have to uh, use provocative uh, test and maneuver in this case at the first and easiest one is Warsalva maneuver in those cases that not conclusive or not practically we can use stress echo or pharmacology echo like dobutamine amyl nitrate or so on before that we have to uh, one thing especially when those patients that have uh, low cardiac output symptom like the exertional dyspnea or like this patient has lightheadedness during those maneuver with the strain always we have to do Warsalva and uh, I noticed the most uh, many take uh, they miss it uh, this type of ob uh, obstruction LVO2 obstruction because uh, lack of the correct technique how we do Warsalva and uh, with just a little attention and knowledge we can uh, detect those patients because as you know this type of the cardiomyopathic hypertrophy mean obstructive has a uh, worse prognosis compared to the non-obstructive the mortality uh, heart failure and sudden death due to uh, arrhythmia is more common in this group of the patient so the, don't be fooled just based on this uh, amount of the uh, hypertrophy the thickness if it's over 1.3 just do uh, Warsalva maneuver if the patient has symptom again the same we have to do it Warsalva maneuver beside of the other study that we do strain uh, speckle strain all those stuff that I explained in other lecture so in this case we can see there is not any significant obstruction in resting but the little uh, velocity increased at the LVOT with putting sample volume at this level you can see here we have we catch it almost close to the two meter so in this case we have to do uh, Warsalva maneuver now let's see how we do Warsalva maneuver the most important uh, factor and parameter for detecting LVOT obstruction is performing correctly Warsalva maneuver we have two options for uh, Warsalva maneuver the classic uh, type is that we go in apical 5 and apical 3 any of them or both of them and we uh, get it apical uh, LVOT put it color and before we start the recording and doing uh, continuous Doppler first we practice with the patient uh, ask the patient and explain to the patient how it has should be done patient like to go to the bathroom make the, his or her belly tight and beard down then we catch it our view see because at the resting and with the Warsalva 
the view will change so you have to know before you go uh, do continuous Doppler you have to know okay uh, when uh, the patient go to the Valsalva what maneuver you have to do uh, that you still you have the LVOT uh, view in that case when you have you know what maneuver you have to do then you go change your sweep speed lowest uh, speed around 25 then we you put it uh, continuous uh, cursor on the LVOT at the level of the LEAZ and turbulence then hit the uh, continuous uh, Doppler and ask the patient slowly bear down and continue bear down until you should get exactly this pattern you can see it start at two little by little it goes high until it get over uh, close to the five meter per second so is that uh, the more classic way we can show with the Valsalva how much was at the beginning and at the strain uh, phase it increased little by little uh, that is proof that we have LVO2 abstraction but the more practical and easier way is that uh, we first we go without uh, Valsalva we do continuous on the LVOT and we measure peak and VTI then uh, we go another one we do uh, ask the patient Valsalva then we fan it until you see LVOT then we uh, put continuous then we record a uh, patient continuously keep uh, doing bear down then we with keeping our view then we measure the highest velocity that we can get on the LVOT both of them are correct but this type this uh, technique is easier and more practical this one need more practice and you know exactly how do you have to do maneuver during Valsalva because the view will change in that case almost always uh, we can get uh, correct uh, gradient without any doubt unless the patient doesn't have good window unfortunately in some cases that in those cases we have other uh, modality we have to use it I hope it was useful for your practice up to the next time have a wonderful time and uh, please it is a public and share it thank you